And I saw a video of Surge pop up. My first impression was this is going to be like a terrible video. I listened to what Surge was saying and within five seconds I was like, this guy's a genius. <laughs> wow. Be the next Mr. Beast or join the team. In order to catch someone's eye, you need to bring something new. Be worth nothing, put in the fucking work and then sell something. My goal was not to be the next Iman. How can I learn from all these guys and just create something personal to me? I used to get pissed, right? I was like, yo, what the fuck is this guy making millions a month? And I'm struggling to make six figures a month. One more question for you. I want to know about skincare routine. Uh, make sure you get 10 hours of sleep. Make sure you make good money every week. <laughs> <laughs> 10 hours. All right, cool. So welcome to today's podcast. Um, I want to call this podcast The Natural Born Leaders. And it was only right for me to get a bunch of natural born leaders. How did you guys meet, by the way? GCC. GCC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Every, yeah. There's a whole bunch of people here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, right now, the part of the reason we're here, there's a GCC Gents Croquet Club event. It's uh, Iman Gadji's, and I should say Pete's NFT project. Um, basically just a, a members club, mastermind. Um, but I would, I would honestly classify more as a members club than anything, especially with like the, the, uh, just the, the way that they're structuring it um, and the, the concierge that they just built in. It's really impressive. It's like yeah. one of the most... It's, most people think, most people on the outside of the world think NFTs are, are a scam. And actually, if you ask Daniel, who's probably one of the most, uh, probably one of the biggest experts I know in the crypto space, yeah. he will also tell you that most of crypto is a scam. Mm -hmm. But there's just zero way that GCC could be a scam. Like, it is so valuable, <clears throat> it's, it's hard to describe. So that's why we're all here and how we met. Yeah, I saw, uh, we met a guy at the gym um, the other day and he showed us the app. Yeah. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> the, the concierge, yeah. Yeah, I was like, wow. Because, cause, you know, let's talk a little bit about Iman. Because a lot of people, right, they will they know Iman from being just a course creator, right? Like, oh, he's, he teaches people how to start agencies. But when I saw that app, I was like, okay, he's actually building something great. And I was like, oh, Chase, fuck. I need to step my game up. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah. um, cause a lot of people, right, they settle for just making money, right? They'll mix, figure out how to make a few millions a year. And then they'll just keep running that thing, right? But I feel like once you've made money, you need to get to a point where you're like, okay, I figured out how to make it, but how do I get to the next level? And I don't think you get to the next level if you don't learn how to build quality products mm -hmm. or quality services. And yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's really cool. I didn't get to join. I don't know much about NFTs or I'm not, I've, I have money in, in Bitcoin. I don't even know how to get it out. But that's how bad I am. Because <laughs> yeah. I just choose to like focus on one thing, you know, business and, you know, I feel like you can win at one game. It's smart, bro. To, <laughs> it's very smart. <laughs> you don't have to play all the games, but um, yeah, no, it's good. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when are you guys staying? How long are you guys staying in Cape Town for? End of the month, I think. Yeah, 30th, roughly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. How about you? Um, same, same. The 29th is when I'm leaving. Yeah. Cool. So, um, yeah. Um, where should we where should we take this? <laughs> we could go anywhere, man. I mean, that's kind of the funny thing. Like, I, for the viewers watching, too, mm -hmm. uh, I guess Daniel had been following your hustle for a couple of years or so. Why don't you start with I, just I how you found Surge? So this is actually a cool story. So I was on Instagram and scrolling, watching shorts and shit, and I saw a video of Surge pop up. And I, at my first impression was, no, this is going to be like a terrible video because it wasn't, I think it was filmed on a poor quality camera and I just wasn't thinking it was going to be good. But I heard, I listened to what Serge was saying and within five seconds I was like, this guy's a genius, like he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. And this was probably a year ago and so then I followed him ever since and yeah, like I just, I just knew instantly that this guy knows his shit. Like the way you approach like mindset and explain concepts around time and money and different things, it... Um, it resonated a lot with me with what, I, what I've learned like in business. So I just knew straight away. Like you can tell when someone knows their shit like pretty yeah. quickly. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, and, and yeah, when you messaged me, I was like, oh man, respect. And, um, and after that, you, like, you started sending me a lot of your network or you started like sharing <laughs> my, my shit with a lot of people. And I was like, really cool. I've had clients come from you. And uh, yeah, when I learned that you guys are here, I was like, oh shit, this is lit. Right. Um, but one thing I, I want to ask you, Oscar and, you know, uh, Arlen is like, because you guys are businesses. Right. So for me, it's like I scale companies. Right. So my mindset is more of like B2B. Right. So I've learned more like, hey, how do you get a stranger who doesn't even want to talk to you 
to buy your product or service, right? But for you guys, it's more of like, um, you know, you guys are going after it. I mean, I don't know, you guys may have different products, but like you guys are going after everyone, everyday people and trying to help them either improve their life, health-wise or social life, right? How do you guys have, you, like when you guys are building your businesses, do you also like try to focus also on like, hey, I need to get really good at understanding sales, sales processes and things like that? Like maybe, you know, Arlie, yeah. you can, cause I know Oscar, cause you know, Oscar is a client, right? <laughs> is he knows the sauce, but like for you, like how did you learn? Cause you know, to scale your, your brand and your, your program, like how did you, how do you go about it? About it? Uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of learning the skills, I think it's, cause I, I've actually, for B2C uh, and for the viewers, it basically just means you're selling a product to consumers. So either health, relationships, what else is pretty much it, right? Yeah. Like health or relationships, you're helping people improve their dating life, their, their social life, or their health and fitness, Oscar's health and fitness and, and vitality. Um, and for that, it's, you know, and, and so I've, I've done that, but I've, I have done a B2B offer. Mm. And I don't want to say it's easier because there are so many people that, that can teach that. And if you can prove that you deliver results, you know, uh, obviously you are rewarded in the marketplace, but in my personal experience, it was a lot easier to sell B2B because mm. it's like, Hey, you give me $2,000. I show you how to make $10,000. And it's just like a, it's simple, 100%, right? Yeah. I'm even as I was ex doing my own intro, I was like, man, I got to work on that. Like, it's like I show people how to improve their relationships, which also helps because you're always kind of trying to prove the value of yep. that thing that you're selling, whereas yep. everyone values money, you know? Um, and, and yes, to an extent, the right people, like Oscar's a genius at figuring, finding the right uh, target so, yeah. to, to sell to who really values health. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm getting better and better at it, I think. Um, but. But I think the, the core part of it is just like locking down your messaging and then locking down your, your target. Yeah. Like it's the same as B2B, but you just have to be, you, ha you have to be very targeted with your messaging. And, and like Oscar was explaining just before this, he's really focusing on his, his landing page, which is that it's, yeah. it's messaging and it's finding the right audience, yeah. um, which is, it's so simple, but like it all comes back to that. Yeah. I think, I think your offer is the hardest though, because it's like, because Surge is like make money online and that's like very tangible. And then mine is like semi-tangible. Like you can do the testosterone, you can gain X amount of weight or lose X amount of weight. But then yours is like, it's like the least tangible, right? So that makes it more difficult, I think. Yeah, yeah, it is tangible. It, it, it is intangible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to like, to like communicate the value of like, hey, once you have, we're really good at, you know, getting girls or like once you're good at you know once you're healthy like what comes out of that right right and i could tell you like hey if i can build you this inf sales infrastructure like you could potentially make a million dollars a year yeah. or 10 million dollars or 100 right so for me when i see because for me my program it's one thing that i've had a hard time doing is is trying to help people who are selling programs let's say like you know coaching programs on the things that people enjoy that they're good at trying to help them like, hey, um, like, hey, we'll start outreach, but like, what do we tell people? Like, how do we figure out that, that sales argument, right? And, and it's just been such a pain because it's like, bro, I don't know how to sell your thing, bro. Mm -hmm. Even if I could figure out how to sell it, but it's just like the value, I don't know how, because maybe getting girls for someone, maybe hey, I want a wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for another person, it could be, hey, I just want a, a different girl every yeah. weekend. Yeah, that's you why know you, know throw, I mean? you always throw three options, bro. <laughs> It's always like, you, you either want this or you want this, you know? Yeah, okay, true. No, that's good, that's good. Um, but yeah, no. It's yeah, I had a comment too, just about uh, sort of bridging off what you were saying, Daniel, about, uh, about how you found Surge. Mm -hmm. um, my experience to you, I, I think would be an interesting topic, uh, was that you popped up somehow, I don't know, yeah, it might have been a reel, actually. I don't think, uh, do you? It could you might have be been a video ads. or a video ad. That yeah, I'm running, so, or, and I, I clicked on your page and I had the same experience. I was, I like watched one thing and I was like, yeah, this guy's a genius. Like I could tell super quickly. And then I clicked on your website and I looked at your, your, um, your, just your website and the yeah. way that you just, the, you break down the entire funnel yeah. right in front of you. I'm like, I've never seen this before. 
And so I think an interesting discussion point we could all chime in on is like the people that achieve product market fit, the people that like break through in marketing and, and in, in business in general, yeah. always innovate and do something that the market has never seen before. Yeah. And I mean, we were just talking about like Sam Ovens, like he was kind of the, he just came through and people were like, holy shit, this guy's like a robot. Like, who is this guy? Yeah. And then, you know, uh, Alex Hermosi kind of came out of nowhere and he's like, handlebar mustache, I run gyms, I'm giant. And then like, and, and then you came through and there's one other guy I've seen recently that kind of came through, did something different. But you, like, I think a huge problem that business and course related people get into is they buy a course and they copy. Yeah. But I see what you've done is you really, like, you've made your own, like, you, it's very unique what you've yeah. done. And I could tell that immediately. Yeah. Because, um, yeah. yeah, no, for me, it's one thing I've realized is um, a lot of people, like lack depth into what they do, mm -hmm. right? So let's say I'll buy Sam Melvin's course, I'll buy, let's say guys like Nick Cosman's course, or you know, I'll go through Alex or Moses stuff, but people, what they do is that they'll like learn from Sam, they'll learn from Hermosi, and then they'll literally just go on into just, you know, regurgitating what they just learned from these guys. Not just regurgitate the content, but even the way these people like um, handle themselves and show up in life, right? But it's like, if you try to copy Sam, like you're stupid. Mm -hmm. Right, because I feel like you know, and there's you know, Naval Ravikant um, is a guy that I really like to to listen to a lot. Right, but he said that, and you know, I want to get into this personal branding thing where he's like, you know, you need to focus on just being yourself. Right, so for me, when I started learning how to make money online, my goal was not to like be the next Iman or be the next Sam. It's like, how can I learn from all these guys and just create something that is personal to me. Because I feel like every time that you, in order to catch someone's eye, you need to bring something new, right? Which is what you're saying. And for me, it's like, I want to build a business, but I also just want to have a little bit of me in the offer itself. Mm -hmm. So when people are buying into it, they're not just buying out of scale an agency or how to, no, they're like buying my worldview, my perspective on how you should live life, right? But. I'd love to figure out like how has build, building a personal brand affected you know your lives, right? Um, like how how does it how does it make it easier for you in business, in social life? Like how is which where where's the value of it? Maybe Oscar can go. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I can show like uh, the client results and stuff, but ultimately, what people are always buying is you, and they want to be part of the vibe, the energy, and so forth. Yeah. So in the business sense, like it's, it's key to have that yeah. and um, make it more human and whatever. Uh, and then outside of business, you mean like dating or what? Like Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's go to dating. I mean, yeah, it gives you, you have the clout, you have the followers, yeah. people following you, like some big names, but that's, I mean, that's more in the business because it's just a bunch of dudes, <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah, funny enough, a lot of people want to get status to like maybe like get girls, but they don't realize that like you're actually just going to attract more guys. <laughs> more guys just yeah, want to nice. that's true. <laughs> I've been getting so many DMs and you know, I don't even have that big of a following, but sometimes I've been getting DMs from people. I'm like, bro, relax. Like, cause I've also seen something that I really hate a lot is when people see you successful and they put you on a pedestal, but I'm like, bro, I'm just, I'm just like you, bro. Like I'm not any different. I just figured out, I've just spent a little bit more time in the basement, you know, learning <laughs> some shit. Right. Mm -hmm. But I'm no special. I'm not special just because you have, but anyway, like it's, I feel like it's something that is ingrained in us where, when we see someone with status, we think that they're a bit special. For sure. Right? But, um, but yeah, Arlen, maybe you can talk about it. I don't know if you, if you talk about it in your program, because I guess it's, it's an important thing, right? Yes, it's definitely related to what I, what I teach. Um, quickly though, one point is that I think is funny is you mentioned Nick Cosman. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say you, and there's another name recently that popped out. Nick? Him too, bro. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know where he came from. Yeah. Um, but it's you and him for like, you guys are doing something different Yeah. and he's bro. He's on a different frequency. Like, I don't know what that guy's doing, but yeah. it's, it's, hip, it's, hip, it's, hip, it's hypnotic. Yeah. Like it's, it's weird. Do you yeah. know who he is? Nick never heard of Nick, Nick, no, never dude, this dude's like on a different level. Like yeah. he's, I don't know what he's cause, doing. Cause he's a, he's a guy who is like, um, he's like an engineer from like, he's an engineer, right? Like MIT, but like he's, right? yeah. Like he's mixed. This dude's like a genius, like yeah. savant, like. 
you can tell, but he's like on the like. He's I, good. He can yeah. break shit down really good. And for me, I think that a lot of the stuff that I've learned, especially when it comes to scaling companies, comes from him, right? But he's a little bit weird too at times, where he's <laughs> like, he is, this is like, you know, he tries to market, but then he's not really like going too crazy on the lifestyle stuff. But like, he tries. To, he's he's the funniest guy I've ever seen. Yeah, he's hilarious. Yeah, he's hilarious. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, and obviously Tate and. Actually, I think one topic after I answer this question, and my mind works super laterally, like I'll just go to topic and so I'm yeah, sorry about that. But uh, Daniel has a really crazy, unique experience that I've, I, on a podcast, I really want to dive into him with because he was with Tate, like Andrew Tate, obviously, from kind of the start of Hostels University and all that. So I, I want to yeah, put a pin in that and revisit that. But um, so that to answer your question, like how does having a brand affect my personal life and social life? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of been everything. Yeah. Like, I was gonna <laughs> like say, it's, for you, it's everything. That's, yeah, that, that's, that's <laughs> also why it's hard to like, it's, it's both easy and hard to, to put that in a pitch. Like, what hasn't my brand given me? It's like, building a personal brand has made me all, the, there's no reason I would make any money if it weren't for the brand that I've built. I wouldn't have any of the connections or relationships. Yeah. I wouldn't have, I, I probably wouldn't have the beautiful relationship that I'm in right now. I mean, yeah, I, there's, it's very, there's very few things in life I think that, I, that have been fruitful to me that haven't come directly from putting content online. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I've recently been pushing a lot of our clients into is like, you know, start putting content online, right? Because, um, and for me, I don't know, I mean, I can try to give my perspective on why I think building a personal brand or building content or putting out content is important. And I think it's because it's something that you can't cheat. You yeah. can't really, you can't really yeah, like yeah, send yeah. a cold yeah. DM and become famous or become known and become valuable for a lot of people. It's like you actually have to put in the work, right? It's like gravity. It's like it's there, right? So I think, and it's hard, right? Because we're engineered to not want to put ourselves out there to be judged, right? So, you know, one of the questions that I was thinking about is like, can everyone on the planet build a personal brand? I don't necessarily think. Soon you'll be able to. Yeah. We can revisit that. That's an AI topic, but I want yeah. Daniel to speak. Yeah, let's talk. On to what exactly? Your, your, your story where the Oh, on the, on the, do you want him to answer, answer both at once? So talk yeah, let's about do personal brand first and we'll get yeah. to that. Yeah. yeah. And then you can kick off the, the tight thing. Yeah. Sure. I think personal brands is probably like the highest ROI investment any useful or interesting person could make because it just has so many different layers of value and it's like that it can give you. And it's also, it's like when you create content, you create a brand, you're creating like mini versions of you who go out into the world and find other people who like you, who you can bring into your circle. Like when you, every video you create is a version of you who goes out and finds other people like you, who will like you. Yeah. And every video you make, you can make hundreds of them. They're like little fucking bullets you shoot out into the universe. So it's, it's similar to code. Code is like a way that you can take what you know and then put it out into the world and it will work for you. It's very similar. Code yeah. and media is like some of the most scalable ways that you can make money and grow influence and et cetera, et cetera, right? Yeah. So I think it's really important. If you're a nobody, I don't know if you can really make a brand, but how long do you have to be a nobody for? You can learn a skill in six months and be valuable, and then you can make a brand. So how long? Six months, not very long. Yeah. So did you have, what, would, what did you want to cover in regards to Tate? You yeah. want to kick it off? Yeah. So I mean, I think, uh, I guess like preface by saying, you know, if, if Tate is guilty of the crimes that he did, if he's proven with evidence, you know, lock him up, put him in jail forever or whatever, right? Yeah. Obviously. Um, but if he's innocent, which, I mean, I'm pretty sure he is. I don't know. But What is, what is he being, because I haven't really been following a lot of, I, I see that, you know, he's now in I haven't in jail. been following a lot either. But, like, what but is he being blamed for? So the main, the main case is, yeah, sex slash human trafficking. It's a very common thing in Romania where it's like a lover boy scenario where the guy will meet a girl, they'll fall in love, he'll say, for us to be together, you have to do this and that for me. Mm -hmm. And the, the example of that with Tate was he would meet a girl, make her fall in love and get on webcam or OnlyFans or something. Mm -hmm. 
I think that depending on who you ask, you could argue that he is. Yeah. Other people would say he isn't. It depends. It's a fine line. It's nuanced. Yeah. Um, they, they say that for... So, like, if you look at what is a sex trafficker, what is a human trafficker, if both people are getting rich from the scenario, it's not an illegal thing in Romania. So, in the website, Tate would say, we get rich together. And something like that sort of saves him from a lot of the potential, like, allegations that he can get. Yeah. So, there's, like, I think six different women who um, they have, like, as an exemplar. Mm. And two of them have come out and said that they are not victims of this crime. So, I, I don't know. It's, it's really weird. I think maybe the Tates could go to jail, but also the whole, a lot of the case is bullshit. Yeah. So... We'll do you see. think do you think it's a lot of people who are like maybe like a who have more power who are like just trying to get him like who are trying to get him yeah. away? It's hard to it's really hard to say. Like there's so much that we we can't know. Yeah. Um I think they definitely I think there's a high chance that they'll find something that was wrong and they can convict them on, to be yeah. honest. Like I just can't see there not being something wrong. Like, yeah. No one's that perfect. No. Yeah. Like when you dig deep enough, you will find someone an evil pass with everyone. Yeah. So it just depends if they can find anything. The hardest part is that Tate will be locked away and he can't talk to any of the girls or hide anything because he would be very good at doing that. So th there's a good chance they'll find something, but I don't know yeah. what it could be. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So going into like the, the education side of it. So Daniel, um, Daniel was with Tate. Okay, so Hustlers University is the the university, the online university that Andrew Tate built. Um, and I think from the outside, a lot of people immediately sort of categorized it as a scam. You know, like this thing is just like taking people's money, like scamming kids. Like that's complete bullshit. Yeah. And the reason I know that is because I've known Daniel now for five or six months. We've texted a lot on WhatsApp. We're now staying here in Cape Town. And like, this dude's a fucking genius. Like, yeah. the, and not only that, but he doesn't really do anything else other than study crypto, study how to make money online and educate. And he is an extremely like, and I can, exp I can pump your tires a little more and explain why, but like, <laughs> he's such a good educator. Like, yeah. And by that, I just mean he's like really good at breaking down concepts that are complicated and making them very, very simple using analogies. Like, and the reason he's good at that is because the way that they built HU um, is through the best way that you can possibly build any sort of product, which is through feedback. Like Hustlers mm -hmm. University, and you, you could maybe explain more about how they built the product, because I know this is product, you know, we're gonna yeah, talk about yeah, products I'd here. Yeah, we'll have to learn more. Um, the way they did it, wh why don't you just, Talk about that. Like, how, how did you guys actually build it? It was like feedback and iterate and feed. Like, the way when you originally described it to me, I was like, oh, wow, like that makes, makes sense why you're so good at what you do. Yeah, well, I would firstly say the Tates are probably the best salesmen on earth. Like, I don't think there is a better sales slash marketing genius than Tate and specifically Luke. Um, I learned most of what I know from Luke. Luke is like the workhorse behind the entire Tate operation. So when they put Tate and Tristan in jail, they think they got him. No, Luke does everything. Mm. The Tates are just the front of the business. So um, Luke runs Hustlers University. Tate doesn't really do anything with it. And yeah, this, the company scaled from zero to, I think, 10, 15 million a month in like 12 months, which Fuck. is pretty good. Um, and that's on zero expenses. They didn't really pay anyone to work in the company. It was all equity. Um, yeah, it was, it was really well done. And from the start, from day zero, when we had zero students, no money coming in, we, we all said, and Luke said, we'll get this to 100K students easily. It's just about keeping him in, keeping retention. Mm. He knew the entire playbook of how the business would play out before we even began the first customer. Wow. Like imagine you make a company and you say, we're gonna get to this level and it's gonna be guaranteed to happen and then it happens a year later. Like that just doesn't happen, yeah. it's insane. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, from zero to, 150k students, it's now at 200k students, it's growing to higher levels. Tate's, while Tate's in jail, the company's going even higher. Wow. Because the entire company doesn't need Tate to exist. All the content, thousands of hours of videos exists. The affiliate army does everything, could be managed by anyone, Luke can manage it. 
So imagine you're in prison and your company is making you more and more money and you don't even have to run it. Insane. Yeah, it's like, it's like the dream of every business owner, right? Yeah. Not only does a company run itself, it grows by itself. That's yeah. like the ultimate goal. So it's been interesting watching that. I'm not with HU anymore because I wanted to focus on my personal brand and it's a little bit iffy with the Tate situation. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Um, but watching it grow from zero to 150K students, super insightful. Uh, there's literally so much that I could say, like I don't know where to start. I, w I wanna talk about the retention play. Like when he said that the goal is to get to 100,000 students and then to retain them, like what are the things that they focus on to do that? Is it, you know, maybe a certain pricing structure? Is it a certain, you know, deliverables that they added to make people wanna stay in? Is it a community thing? Like what is it? Yeah, that's the thing, right? Getting a company big that is a recurring model is mostly about keeping a student in than getting new customers. Because when you go to a certain point, the outflow is more important to minimize than to maximize inflow. Because yeah. when you have, let's say, 10 million a month with 10% of students dropping off, that's a million a month leaving. So you ha you're better off putting capital to keep people in than to get new people in. Yeah. So retention was something that we, it was a, it's a battle. Like it's a constant battle. There was a lot of things that we did. Um, the main thing is that we never looked at what other people did. We just literally came up with whatever idea made the most sense and implemented it. So for example, um, when a student would unsubscribe, we don't delete them from the Discord. We would add them to a separate <laughs> sort of, not server, but a separate channel, and it would just be like jail. We would put them in jail, wow. and then we'd have a sales team who would talk to them when they're in the jail, and it was like upsell, and they would be paid commission to get them back into HU. That was just one example of something we'd do. Um, well, hold on, those, are, those were the marketing tactics, but can you talk a little more? Because like, I think you're overlooking how you actually helped people. Like you, you literally would like ask people, you know, for feedback if they were considering dropping off or, yeah, I remember one time you said like, Luke was emphasizing the only thing you have to do is make people 100 a month. And mm -hmm. if you can do that, then they'll stay, mm -hmm. right? So like, yeah. Yeah, so the first thing we, we always said was when someone joins, you want to make them, get them a quick win as soon as possible because if you can make someone money, that gives them hope and the first month is always the hardest month. So the first month when someone joins your company, whatever it is, is the most important. If you can get them past the first month, you look at like the data of every company that people tend to stay like all the time. So yeah. it, the biggest thing was make them 50 bucks, whatever, it, find a way to make them some money, get them some sort of win, and then you, you keep them for life. That was basically the plan. And every single sentence written, every single video is created to maximize for retention. So every belief that we insert, every perspective that we shift, it's all about making them stay in the group. So yeah. like, every, like if we ever had a retention problem, we would make Tate film a video about losers quit. Like when you join a fight gym, do you stay for a month or do you stay for 12? You know, mm -hmm. every, you just, you, you just hit them with so many different beliefs that it will wire them to never leave. Yeah. Like if you're a program, like someone programs you, right? It's either someone you don't want to program you or someone you want to. If you want to run a company, you should program your customer to want to stay in the company, right? And that's like what marketing material is, right? You're convincing someone to buy what you have. Yeah. So why not convince someone to do stay. everything you want them to do? Yeah. yeah, and that's, think about why Tate has so many videos. You're just programming someone to go from finding the product, buying it, and then staying in and spending all their money. And it just continues all the way up the mountain and you just try to take as much money as possible. And that's how every company works. It was just a really explicit version of that. So yeah. everything, it's all just, what, it would be what you call casting spells, basically. Yeah. You cast spells on your audience, get them to think certain things that lead to them spending more money or staying with you, and then, yeah, you make the I money. still think you're overlooking <laughs> the value that you give them. Like oh, you, so yeah, of course. You literally like, just sound like you're saying, yeah, we just like brainwash people to take their money. Sorry, yeah. No, like, that's, <laughs> not, that's literally what I was saying is not what you guys do. So like, but it's not. Yeah, no, of course, yeah. No, there's all, no I'm not trying to say there's no value. I'm just trying to explain from a marketing perspective yeah, as a marketer, across I all know. businesses, yeah. yeah. No, there's a, there's a ton of value. Um, yeah. There's, but like, I, I don't know how to explain, like, how do I explain value? Like, I'm not just gonna say, I, I yeah, mean, there's 10 professors. Dude, the, the, the thing, the only way I can explain it is like, I asked, Dan, I was asking Daniel because, um, I mean, I have a setting team that you know sets appointments for my sales team mm -hmm. and i was just asking daniel and he was like oh i did this for the tates like he he did some dm setting and stuff like that yeah. and sales 
And Daniel's like, yeah, I'd love to, you know, just help train your sales team. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, I, I want to do it so that I, because through teaching you learn the most. That's yeah, what Daniel said to me. And, um, and so he started teaching my guys and like, for free, like needs nothing. And that was kind of the thing with Hustlers University. Like he's already a millionaire. Yeah. Like he does not need, he doesn't need me to like pay him anything. He can yeah. print money from his laptop. He's literally been doing it the whole time we're here. He's just like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to like, this is like an airdrop here. Like there's free money here. Like he just, that's just what he does. Yeah. Um, but he's teaching my team and like voice note, voice note, voice note, voice note, like such thorough advice. So I don't, I don't know, like, could you speak more to the education aspect? Like how, how did you get so good at breaking down these concepts for that's all, basically for idiots to understand? That's Luke. That's Luke. Yeah. Okay. Luke is like as close to a human robot as you can get. But okay. in a really good way. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but when you learn from someone, you just, you sort of absorb them. You like become that person. And Luke yeah. is an absolute genius. Okay. Like you become the average of the people you're around. So if all you read is the materials of very smart people. And that's why you listen to like podcasts and stuff of the richest business yeah. owners. You don't listen to like a brokey business owner. Mm -mm. Like it's the same concept, right? You become the average of the five people. So yeah, it was pretty much, I, I would love to say it was me coming up with all this stuff, but it's just me learning from Luke basically and, and those sort of people. What, what kind, what's the background for Luke? Like what, what, what? Luke is, so there's Tristan, Tate and Luke. Uh, Tristan, Andrew and Luke, right? Tristan is the party man. Andrew is the like front man and Luke is the back end. Yeah. So he's more like a computer savvy coder robot sort of guy. And they're all the same person, just a different sort of like, I, I guess, focus point. Yeah. And his focus point is like, how can I as efficiently as possible explain a concept so that you can understand it in the best way possible as fast as possible? Mm. And um, yeah, that, it's just like you, you, you learn so quickly from someone like that because they are writing in the way that makes you learn the fastest. So if you read something from someone that's stupid and you read something from him that's smart, you can learn what he says five times faster than this information. So you will just by default learn five times as fast. So, yeah. 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 That still doesn't answer your question of <laughs> the value. <laughs> no, I mean, it, this is closer. I feel like the reason why it's hard for him to answer is because, and this happens a lot when people ask me like, hey, what do you do? It's like, what? Yeah, How yeah, do yeah. I answer that? You know, so for him, because he's in the product, he doesn't, he can't really, he doesn't, there is so much that he doesn't know which, where to start. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like, you know, if I asked you like, okay, what is the best way to get the outcome that you help people achieve? Right, right, right. Where do you start? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I understand that. So like from the outside. Well, then maybe, maybe I can answer for you. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah you can <laughs> answer for me. I feel like I already did though. It's just like, it, it's, yeah, it's just he, the, you're just saying he's very efficient at producing the result that people want and making money by explaining concepts clearly. That's kind yeah, of what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's basically just having like a thousand different metaphors and ways of viewing the world that are just the perfect perspective and then applying them to every situation that you could come across. Like yeah. if you know the thousand potential frames that you'd ever need to know to approach a situation, you know how to answer every question. Yeah. Like present any situation if you have every potential like perspective you need to consider you'd know what to do yeah. so yeah quick question if the short form content thing didn't pop out do you guys think because because tate i don't think he, he spends any on acquisition right he does zero i mean lambos and shit yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> Lamb, yeah the marketing the marketing stuff but besides that it's the content being redistributed online that gets him all the impressions right um do you think it would have been successful if the, this trend of like, if these platforms like TikTok or Reels and Shorts would have never came out? Depends what you define as successful because I mean, Tate was- 15 mil a month type of successful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, if he launched, so he launched HU before he began TikTok and that was the short form thing, right? Yeah. Before TikTok, he was still doing like a mil or two a month. Let's say TikTok never existed. I reckon he could have got to maybe 30 to 50K students. How was he making a mill too before the all the uh, war, war room, war room, casinos, um, courses like fitness courses and stuff. He had a he had an audience before all yep. the the noise, right? His strategy was YouTube and podcasts. Mm. Podcasts were the biggest thing. Like literally, like any podcast he would go on, he would just take every viewer of that audience. They oh. would be that would be just 
hypnotized and watch the whole thing and then they're like, I love this dude. Yeah. Or they hate this dude. Yeah. Something yeah. tells me if there were no short form, he just would have dominated what, cause then there wouldn't have been short form for anyone. And yeah. like that trio, you know, lo looking at the, just the way that they, they all mesh together. I feel like that combination would have probably powered through any medium, yeah. you know, there and was, they do. I mean, their long form is podcasts are the most watched podcasts in the world. It's four hours each. Like the, the, the sh four 10 minute you, a lot of his podcasts yeah. are like two to four hours. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, I've bro. never, I've never really consumed a lot of long form from Tate. There yeah, was never, there was crazy. never really like creating content, like short form. It was just repurposing what already existed. So yeah. it was just like hopping on a trend or cr I guess creating the trend almost. Right. Yeah. It's funny. It's funny. If you guys were to pick one skill to like, you can only be good at one thing in order to be successful. What would it be? You kids can choose being a marketer, being good at sales, which is more like closing and stuff. Um, being, you know, maybe being able to code, being a great, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, anything, right? What would it be or some other skill? Well, it's, it's either like knowledge or marketing and you'd have to choose one and then the other would have to be provided by someone else. Yeah. And that's basically it. But which one would you, would you choose? Oh. Well, now I have more of the, I don't know. I like both, you know, I like both. You have to and choose that's one. That's how you become You have successful. to choose one and then everything else is going to come from like, what is the one thing that can make everything else work if, in your opinion? Because I feel like, oh, so th the reason why I ask this question is because I see a lot of people who get lost into the, oh, I want to become a closer. I want to be good at selling or, hey, I want to become a marketer or I want to be good at, you know, buying media or, you know, media buying. Um, but like they're not necessarily able to scale, right? Mm -hmm. They'll make a little bit of money, right? But they're not really able to make crazy amounts of money. So like, what is, what is, what are you gonna pick? If you had to, you only have one choice, bro. Like there's no- I think it's, I think it, you would just pick like, in, in my case with health, it would just be about knowledge and the greatest knowledge to help people. And then the rest, so, will, the so rest will kind of fall into place. Yeah. Learning? Yeah. But teachers aren't the richest people. They're not the smartest people. That's why they're teachers. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay, cool. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, what about you, Arlen? I, my, first, my first answer was going to be product. It's a really good question. Yeah. Which, but then I also realized product is also kind of the same thing as knowledge because knowledge turns into the product, mm -hmm. um, at least for an info product. Um, I mean, if your product is so good that your, your customers can't help but tell other people, then, you know, marketing is solved, sales is solved. But to not steal Oscar's answer, I, I would <laughs> probably say, I would probably say marketing. And the reason for that is my, I started just posting vlogs on YouTube in, in college. And I was just showing my life in college and sharing my just background or, or just sharing my day to day life. Um, yeah. And my videos, just I guess, people always wanted to know what life was like for an, an American in, in college. And because of that, when I started selling things, it was almost as if people didn't care about the product because they just wanted to support me. So the, the marketing was so good that they, and I, I can relate to that too, because some people I've consumed so much content that I'm like, I don't care, like, uh, here's my money, like, if I learn one thing, I don't really care. I've gotten so much free value from this person. Like, yeah. you know, take the money. Yeah. Cool. What about it's got to be sales. Sales? Do you agree? Uh, I don't. Okay. <laughs> I think it's sales because I just, if I think of any skill that cr crosses like all areas of life and is the most important part of a business, I feel like it's personally sales because sure, like if your product's good, it's, it, it helps people, right? Sure, like if you're good at knowledge learning, like it's good, right? But I just feel like you can make a decent product with anything, with a base level of knowledge and help people. As long as you can be really good at selling something, you can sell anything. Yeah. And I feel like selling is the foundation of like just growing as a person. If you can sell, you can do everything. Like, and this is like a common thing everyone says, like you can talk to girls, you can yeah. like network, you can do everything. If you can talk, if you can persuade people, if you can be charismatic, if you can sell something, 
you'll you'll never go broke again. Like, how yeah. could you learn less than seven figures if you could sell? If you're good at selling, I don't know. Sure. I just feel like it's sure. the most important skill. Sure. I think I think you're right, right? And for me, if I, okay, sales. I, I think sales is a general thing, right? Um, but for me, if there is one thing that I've realized, and you know, I guess it incorporates everything, but. I think my business success has comes from understanding that like I need to get as much leverage as I can, right? Which is, you know, I guess, you know, it's, you know, it's marketing, it's sales, right? But one thing I've realized is like you need to be able to, even if you're going to get good at sales, be good at selling, not on the phone, but I mean like to a thousand millions of people, right? Meaning through a video like this, right? Being able to sit in front of a camera, Break down how you're going to change someone's belief and have them believe the thing that you want them to believe in order to buy your product, right? If you can become good at that one thing by leveraging media, I think like making money is going to be the easiest thing that has ever happened, right? Because a lot of people, a lot of people don't understand the importance of like leverage. Leverage is everything. And even building a company, right? I see a lot of people who are amazing you know, they're, talent, they're talented as crazy, like crazy, right? But like they're only serving five people. They're only known by uh, 20 people. I'm like, bro, where are you going to get the millions from 20 people? Most people are broke. So you need so many impressions, right? And one guy that I like to follow a lot is Grant Cardone, where he talks about, you know, like you always need to be promoting, promote, 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 get known. Like it's not even about get known for something great. Just put shit out there in the universe, right? And that's why for me, uh, you know, like right now I have a team and, you know, we we're, we're, we're have a lot of clients, but it's like my biggest task is how can I get someone to know me, right? I don't really spend a lot of money on ads, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, yo, you're so stupid not spending money on ads. Because a lot of people will be like, oh, I don't have a return on on, you know, on 100 or 1,000 or 10 grand spent. But it's like, it's not about the instant return. It's about getting another person to know that you exist. Because as, as if no one knows, if nobody, if not enough people know about you, bro, I don't care if you have the best product. I don't care if you're the best at anything. You need a lot of people to know you. You need the whole Cape Town to know you, right? If you land and so, nobody knows you. why are you not you, doing ads? Why are you not doing ads? Because well, I'm being stupid. <laughs> no, no, no. What's the real reason? What's the real reason? How many short form editors do you have on your team? I have like... I have like I have like one agency that's helping me with short form. And We're not producing enough at all. How much? How many videos? Short form videos a month? We're probably doing like two, three a day. So that's like sixty, ninety a day a month. Okay. Here's just my here's my perspective. Yeah. Uh, limited perspective. Mm -hmm. But me and Daniel both found you through short form. Mm. Um. And here we are doing this podcast. Daniel has a major cult following. Oscar has a major cult following. Yeah. I've had a major cult following for like seven years. Yeah. You're going to get some customers from this podcast. 100%. Um, we've, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. yeah um, and so, uh, pin in that. Second point. Um, I have, I, I, okay. I was about to cancel my ads recently. Mm. And... I kept them on just because, you know, whatever. But um, I spent, uh, I won't say exactly how much, yeah. but um, not too much. I think we all know the market rate for a short form editor. 30 videos a month for six months. 40 million impressions. That's insane. I spent double that on ads the past six months. Two million impressions. Wow. So... What is that? 15x return, roughly? 20x return yeah. on short form? So, me and Daniel both found you through, through short form. Yeah. And just my own personal experience, uh, there's just a little bit of a higher visibility impressions thing, like yeah. fame thing. And I, I know this is what Iman's doing, this is what Alex Mosey's doing. The sauce is basically just. Get as much shit Short out form. there. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, 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 I know, I know. And for me, it's like, I, I, I know, but it's just that. One thing, so for me, my perspective, I think long form is better than shorts. Although shorts have a bigger reach, I think for my type of product, let's say, you know, five, our products are like five figures and more, 
It's like I cannot, in a short, in 60 seconds, sell you on my program, right? I can get you hooked and like getting into my ecosystem, but to really sell you, you need to watch a long form banger where I'm like, I really break shit down, right? I, so I, think, I don't know about that. That might be B2B though, I think. That's where exactly, it might differentiate. Exactly, yeah, right? Yeah. If I want to get into B2C, let's say like sell a lower ticket course, for sure, I think shirts is where the yeah. way to go, right? But for me, like I'm not saying that I don't put a lot of emphasis on content, but like I'll put out a lot of content, but it's more like I'll sit down and really break something down, right? So as an example, yeah. like this trend of short form, I have a lot of clients where I'm helping them build short form content agencies. Funny enough, I'm yeah. helping people start them, but I'm not really crazy on short form. But the way that I've explained sh the, the value of short form is through, um, so I was listening to this guy called Chamath, right? And he was explaining yeah. the trend of, of, of how to get rich, right? So he was like, hey, if you were to build another social platform, what would you do, right? And it was like, yo, I wouldn't actually build another tech company instead. I would be like someone like Mr. Beast where, um, where he was saying that like these guys are becoming like microcosms of the platform on which they, they, their, their brand is on, right? So he explained that the way that people got rich are these tech, because if you really want to make a lot of money, you've technically got to learn from these tech companies because there's no other companies that have built the amount of wealth in, in such a you know, short time. And you know, he explained how these guys are, are got rich by like you need to get build a platform and focus on getting as many users as fast as possible, as many consumers as possible. So we started with something like an iPhone, right? If you really look at iPhone, the reason why the iPhones are so valuable is because they build something on which a lot of people can use, and you know, it's kind of like you you amass a lot of people on one thing, and then. Facebook, TikTok, Google, YouTube, they did the same thing. They built a platform and they focused on getting a lot of users fast and they didn't charge for anything, right? So if you really look at Mr. Beast, let me create the thing, let me create YouTube videos and guess what? I'm gonna get a lot of users to start and then the more users you get, the more you can monetize that thing and get rich, right? So he was explaining that like, guys who build brands, even Hormozy, if you really look at it, he's technically a platform. He's a platform where instead of just having a product like this or having Google as a platform or as a tool, he's just using his knowledge, right? And that's where, for me, it's like, you know, I'm going to go and jump on other things. It's like, I think that selling courses is stupid. And you know why? Because when you're gaining knowledge, you're keeping a lot of users outside. You're keeping people outside because the value does not come. I mean, you can get rich from selling courses short term, but to really tap into the nine figure, you know, billion dollars, you can't be wanting to collect every dime from every consumer. You got to focus first on like Andrew Tate. How can I get my shit out there the most and then monetize a bigger audience? So as an example, if Tate wanted to charge for his podcast episodes, it would have been stupid, right? Because mm -hmm. the reach would have been really bad. So. Coming back to the short form content agency, the reason why it's gonna be, if you're selling a short form content agency, the thing you need to focus on is like, tell all these coaches, consultants, anyone who's selling something that the goal is to get reach, the goal is to get users, consumers. Once you have the consumers, then you can make money, but do not optimize for making money short. Dude, I'm gonna go home and hire another short form editor. Go crazy, bro. Go crazy. <laughs> I'll hire five. Let's go. Right? <laughs> and you know, this chat GPT thing, you know, they said that it got like a million users in like what? How many days? Is it days? Is it? Um, yeah, six days. Right? And now they're worth like 29 billion, right? <laughs> but it's like, if they, yeah. right? It's crazy. So it's like, because for me, it's like when I hear these kind of things, because it goes against the logic, the, 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 you know, the, if you were to be like, hey, I want to make yeah. money, you would be like, let me go knock on a door and close that person, that the first person who's going to give me their time. But if you really want to get wealthy, you actually can't want to be, you shouldn't be selling every single person. You should be focusing on like, I need to get a lot of people to know me, right? So, so yeah, so I think that, you know, I think if you can become, if you are broke right now, just start anything where you help people scale their content and redistribute it. I think it's the easiest thing to sell, right? I agree. I feel like people, when they try to make money at the start, they, they're always focused on how can I make money? Mm -hmm. They don't really care about like, how can I just literally help someone for free? 
for six months, not ask for anything in return, and then make money later. They think they're worth something. Like people think they're valuable. They're literally worthless. Like you should think that you're worth zero, and then maybe after six months of being worth zero, maybe you're worth something. Yeah. Because people would rather be worth 5K a month for the rest of their life than be worth 0K for maybe two years, and then 100K for fucking, you know, 100%. 10 years after. Yeah. So I just think that people think they underestimate, they, they overestimate their value in the short term and they underestimate it long term if they do the right yeah. things. It's really bad. I, I don't want to pump my own tires on this, but hearing you guys talk about this, I'm like, damn, this is exactly what I did. Like to get where I, I am now. Yeah. I started, as I said, making videos in college, just documenting my life. And it's all there, like it's all on YouTube. My first videos are so bad. Like they're just me hanging out in a, uh, um, like we were like visiting my aunt and uncle in New Jersey, which is like pretty boring state, like not much going on. And like, you know, my family's not super wealthy or anything, just, mm -hmm. just no, nothing happening really. And then I made videos every day for like months. And then all of a sudden, seven, eight months in when I had somewhat of a platform, then I dropped a product and nice. it was t-shirts and stuff. So it was like yeah. nothing, but it's exactly right. It's like, be worth nothing, but put in the fucking work and then sell something. Yeah. It's, it's so, it's, that's the formula. Yeah, if, if you don't have an audience in 2023, I think the most important thing is audience. You know what it is? It's, Shamath was saying this too. Yeah. He was saying the next big industry, he, what did he say? He, he was like, it was first, it was, it, it, like it was, I don't remember what it was first, but second, it was, uh, it was the platforms. Yeah. It was like, be the next Facebook, be the next TikTok. Be the, those are all kind of taken now. Yeah. The next thing is Mr. Beast. Yeah. It's, the, it's either be the next Mr. Beast or join the team. The next yeah. billion, trillion dollar company is going to be the creator. Yeah. And so if you're not that person, then join that team because you yeah. will get rich on that team. 100%. Because, you know, I've seen a lot of people, because for me, it's like, you know, before I used to get pissed that people are making more money because uh, I used to get pissed, right? I was like, yo, what the fuck is this guy making millions a month? And I'm struggling to make, you know, a few six figures a month, right? And I was like, you know, why are you, why are you pissed, bro? You, you're, not, you're not skilled. Because a lot of people will hate on someone who's doing better than them. And I feel like if you're hating on me or if you're hating on the next guy, you can't actually learn from them, Right? So what I started doing is like, yo, why am I hating on this guy, bro? Let me just do what he's doing. And I feel like the biggest leverage that you can have is whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing, just focus on audience. I think it's the biggest leverage. Like there is nothing, as when you have an audience, like I, I could care less about what you're selling, you're going to make money, millions of dollars, right? So, so yeah, I think whatever you're doing, you're a brokey like you better make sure you at least make it known that you're a brokey you know what i mean like get on youtube get on shirts be like yo bro <laughs> i'm broke <laughs> at least get known for something right but get known and um yeah it's funny yeah like even if you don't make money you could make a tiktok journeying your money from not making money to yeah. making money yeah. and then you make money from the journey of not making money and making money like i've seen dudes do that they're like day one of making an e-com store and they haven't even made money they got like hundred thousand views a million views yeah. Like that could literally be what you do today, but most people don't do that. Yeah. And I think for me, one of the biggest mistakes that I did was to not start. I mean, I guess I did shoot content when I was starting out, but I didn't really emphasize it because I guess I probably had the same mindset of like, hey, let me do something first and then I'll, I'll, sh I'll you know, I'll be, I'll have something to talk about. But yeah. I think that the best time to build an audience is when you actually aren't winning. Because mm -hmm. when you're winning, you're so removed from everyday people that like, they won't really be able to relate to you. So I think like, you know, if you look at everyone, you know, Arlene, it can maybe be for you. Like if you had this lifestyle and you start shooting content today, it would be good to consume, but like a lot of people wouldn't want to come back to it and be like, oh shit, what's your day today? Like, oh, you know, like entertainment stuff. Cause the stuff you're doing, it's not like they would, you know, come here, rent a villa and you know, like they can't really mm -hmm. relate to it. So I think that if you're on the journey, like the best time to start is like when you're getting started on your journey because because that's where the biggest you know percentage of people can actually consume your content and relate to it relate to your dreams relate to your struggles relate to uh to the path that you're taking because this is actually stuff that they can take action on right 
but um, no, it's really cool. Um, I see that you guys are wearing crazy watches. I think we can get into that. I'm looking at this AP and I'm like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> it's shining. Because for me, I'm not really into watches. Like I don't know nothing about watches. I've never gotten a watch. But um, yeah, what is your watch? This is an AP. The only reason I bought it, and I don't even believe in these watches, I think is obviously there's some like attraction to it and I like yeah. the shiny and it kind of gets me a little bit. But yeah. like, this is bullshit. This is just a networking tool basically because I live in Dubai, right? And I'm going for like lunches with prospective clients and they're wearing like $300,000 Richard Mill watches. Yeah. And it just, it's just a conversation starter and that's, that's all it is. Yeah. But like, I'm going to sell this and buy a farm like <laughs> in, in, within like t a year or two. So that's, nice. that's all it is. It's just a conversation starter. Yeah. Well, what are you wearing? Uh, it's a Rolex Submariner. Um, similar story to Oscar. I mean, I, so I went to London to visit Iman and shoot a podcast with him in May. And, you know, when you hang out with Iman, uh, Iman Gadji, you know, you're going to buy a watch because he's kind of the, he, like, he's the watch guy. Um, so, like, he kind of walked me through the process and, you know, I, I just resonated with this and I liked it. But, um, yeah, I, I like it, and I've, I've definitely started to learn more about, about watches, and I think it makes sense that they're an investment and that most watches go up in value over time if you know what to buy. Yeah. Um, I feel different with a, with a nice watch on, like a little bit. Yeah. People do treat you differently, like Oscar said. For sure. Um, it is like a little cult community. Mm. Like People will notice, notice and take you more seriously, you know, certain people, not everybody, because yeah. some people don't know. Like, little backstory, like my... <laughs> My dad, when I came home with this and I showed it to him, he was like, holy smokes. He's like, how much? I don't want to know how much you paid for that. Would you, so like $1,000? <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I was like, oh, dad. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, like, I, I mean, I've been, I, yeah, that's, that's kind of my, my background. Yeah. What are you rocking? Man, this is just some brokey Wimbledon. Like, this is like <laughs> the one everyone gets when they first make money. It's cringe. That's the um, Warren watch. Yeah, it's the Warren watch. <laughs> That's the one I had, and then I, I was like, I couldn't wear that anymore in Dubai. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it was embarrassing, man. I'm gonna. I, I, I honestly don't really care. I just bought it when I <laughs> but had I like a bunch it. of cash. It looks it's, nice. It's still nice. It's like a. It's a nice. It's like a really entry level watch, I guess. Yeah. I just asked the guy, the watch guy in Warren, like, what's like a good first watch, and he's just like this one. I was like, fuck it. Let's go. So. Yeah, I'll probably get enough. I, I don't know. I'm not really into watches. It's just, yeah. yeah. I feel like there is a peer pressure to buying watches if you're in the marketing space. I just feel it every day. Even my closer got a watch. And I was like, bro, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> no, you don't need it. You don't need it. Yeah. Actually, uh, my, my girlfriend's dad is such a G. He's, uh, he's so funny. He's like this, this Persian dude. Um, and my girlfriend's family is like super, like, Persian, Israeli, Iranian, Israeli, basically, and um, and they're all into real estate. Mm. And he's like, his thing is like, he's like, I bought a watch one time, and like, and and like, a guy came with gun and took it from me. So now he's <laughs> like, I, I just now I just buy houses. What are you gonna do? Take my house? Like, <laughs> he's, so he's like, I, I, you know, I try to look as poor as humanly possible. Yeah. And that's just through life experience of getting fucking robbed. <laughs> like, it's is not, you know. But I also feel like, you know, like, yeah, when, you know, I've been hearing a lot about, you know, London going crazy and, um, like, even yeah. here, like, a lot of people don't wear their watches uh, when they're out. But I'm like, for sure, like, you know, if someone is broke and, you know, he's seeing you move around with a million dollar watch, like, bro, that's a good, a good payday. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, if you're broke, if your life is a little messed up, like, yeah, I mean, shit, it's survival, you know? Are, are you ready for the hook of the, this podcast? Yeah, please. We almost got murdered last night. <laughs> for, but yeah, you talked, for real? Is it for real? It was sketchy. It was, it was sketchy. sketchy. So yeah. sketchy. What happened? We went out to dinner, casual dinner. Yeah. Um, casual Nobu. Well, yeah, I mean, it was... It was it, Nobu? It was literally like, it was Nobu, but it was literally a, th a fourth of the price than it's supposed to be. It was yeah. like six people, $350, wow. like, is amazing. <laughs> Um, but got back at, I don't know, 10, 10, 11 PM, no, 11 PM or so. And I was the first one back with my girlfriend. We took two cars. And as soon as we got out of the car, there was a man, there was a lot of homeless and actually like crackheads around, uh, Camps Bay on the beach. Yeah. And there was a guy who was not looking 
too uh, stable. Like he was, you know, walking around and mm -hmm. he just, he was sketching us out. And we went up to our gate and um, I was like frantically trying to put in the gate code. And as soon as I like touched the gate, it was hot. And it was like, it looked like it had been blown off. Wow. Like, 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 like piping hot metal. Like. Piping hot metal and just like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. And then I go to the front door and our front door's open. And I'm like, oh no. Like, I'm like, now there's a guy outside and maybe a guy inside. inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, fuck. So I, I text Oscar and Daniel, I'm like, how long, like, how long till you guys are back? They're like three minutes. And then I call our Airbnb people and like, or I text them, I'm like, hey, can you please send someone? There might be someone in the house. And of course as well, as we were waiting there, it's completely quiet. We're trying to be as quiet as possible. My girlfriend's shitting her pants. And, yeah. and, and when it's quiet and you think someone's in your house, someone's in your house. Like you hear, you hear that someone's in your house even if it's dead silent. Yeah. So we heard footsteps even though there were any. Um, and then armed forces, dude with a, like a AK, M16, M16, M16 pulls yeah. up and two other guys with pistols show up and just raid our house like just full on and check wow. every single room. Guy goes upstairs and is like, safe is open. Safe is open and the, and the bag is open. And then <laughs> runs like, upstairs and Daniel, like bad, we man. walk up and Daniel's just like, oh no, I'm just messy. Like, <laughs> I had to rush for dinner, shit was everywhere. He was ready. <laughs> that guy was so ready. <laughs> Clothes so, were on the bed. Yeah. Even when he arrived, he was like, yo, do you want me to jump over the wall? Like, yeah. I'm gonna bust down the door. I'm like, no, That's relax, bro. <laughs> no, yeah. So. So no, yeah, we, we were fine, I think. Uh, but uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I feel like, you know, when I was coming here, like everybody like, oh, you're going to Cape Town. Oh, yeah, be safe. Oh, be safe. Be safe. And I guess, you know, uh, if enough people say something, it's probably there is some truth to it. Right. But I don't necessarily because my vibe from being here, it's like, bro, it's like chill. You know, of course, at night there might be some crackheads on the streets down there. Right. Yeah. Dude, but like, yeah. but I feel like during the day, like it's it's a great it's a great. Yeah, what, what, are, what is your experience? Is it, is it your first time here? Yeah. No, I was going to say, too, it's no difference than, like, Venice Beach, California, or, or anywhere in L.A. Like, yeah. that's, most, that's where I spend most of my time. Like, there's crackheads there, there's homeless there, worse than here. Like, yeah. way worse than here. Yeah. It's just, you know, and there's break-ins and, and, like, bad stuff happens there. It's just, yeah. Dude, people just... It was the same thing in Mykonos this summer. People were like, watch out, like, there's people going to rob you. Yeah. Granted, we had like three armed guards and an attack dog at our, at our spot, but, but, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, if, if you get robbed, like there's a reason for it, you know, God's plan. Like, yeah, just, just get richer so you don't have to worry about one Richard, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Camp Spay isn't really Cape Town. I would, this is like a little bubble of like white people, like. Yeah. It, it's not really like, people say this, like it's not really Cape Town here. Like Cape Town's like yeah. the other side. Yeah. Yeah. When I got here, I was like, wow. So I've been to a few places where I really liked. I think Marbella was one. I think the temperature here, the views are insane. But here too, I was like, wow. Like this is actually a place you could be here. Like, I don't know about you guys if you're able to, to work and, you know, dial, dial in. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think this place is really sick. Like, because it's just cool. Like, I don't know. Some, there's something about it that just makes you feel like you can just meditate a little bit yeah, just, and just grind and just put numbers on the board type of vibe. But, uh, but yeah, where, what are some of the places that you guys have been that you guys like, where you feel like is the, is the well, if you were to be in one place, this is definitely up there. Like the villas, yeah. clean air, sun, like yeah. solid place. You loved it, eh? I loved it, man. Between here and Dubai. They got, they got great milk, you know? Yeah, you got the milk here. Oh. <laughs> Between here and, uh, in, in uh, Dubai, where would you stay? If, you, if there was the same wealth here oh, as in definitely Dubai? Definitely here, bro. Dubai is just about taxes. Yeah. Only taxes. Taxes yeah. and network. Yeah. I don't know how many. There's like, I think there's like a few, like 60,000 millionaires in Dubai or something. It's that crazy. might be completely wrong. But like, there's a lot of millionaires. Yeah. So for my business, it's obviously very good. Yeah. It's Outside great. of that. Yeah. What about you? Where's the best place to live? Or... Like to, be, like, like to be in, you know, maybe work, maybe I, have fun a little bit, but mainly like a place where you could stay for long periods of time and not want to move. It depends on the season, like depends on the time of year. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is partly what I like coach guys on, which is sort of funny. Um, 
I mean, specifically the higher level guys. It's like, I mean, if you, if you join my funnel, you know, you're, you're not making a ton of money at first, but you may be making your first deal online. It's like, you know, you just go to, you go to Cape Town, that's easy. You go to Bali, you go to Mexico, you go to Colombia, these places where the, the secret to life, and I said this the other night, it's, it's earn in US dollars and spend in Rand or mm. spend in, in, in pesos or spend in rupee. A rupia, that's uh, that's Bali. Um, so it's like, yeah, just don't don't think like, oh, like I I <laughs> I sold my first whatever short form contract, yeah. and I'm gonna I'm gonna rent a G wagon in L A. Yeah. Like that's stupid. You're gonna be broke. That's exactly the next, what I did. <laughs> yeah, that, is that, yeah. With yeah. the Lambo in Dubai. Yeah. You know? But but I mean, <laughs> but here's the you thing gotta, too. Gotta here's the one. thing. Like I, I've actually done that. Like I've. I've done, I've done both. Like I've, I've spent a long time in Bali and places like that, but I've also have done the stupid like mansion in the Hollywood Hills and like literally spent like every dollar coming in yeah. on that. But that was also kind of marketing. Yeah. And, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would, I would say just the smartest thing is just go anywhere where the currency is not as strong yeah. and earning USD. Yeah. Or USDC. <laughs> I reckon, I like either Cape Town and, or Bali and then combine that with Eastern Europe like Warsaw. I feel like that's like the perfect combo of two places. What's got, in Eastern Europe? Yeah, Warsaw and then no, Cape what, Town or what's, Bali. What's in Eastern Europe? Lots of... <laughs> no, nah, it's just like really, it's just like if you want to run... Really your, interesting history, you know, a lot. <laughs> yeah, the, the architecture is beautiful. <laughs> no, no, like Warsaw, like Eastern Europe is just where you'd run your dating and stuff. I don't think Pretty the dating good, scene yeah. is good here or in Bali in particular or like in most places you'd go to, like Marbella wouldn't be good, um, Dubai wouldn't be good at all. No, so if you want to run your dating, <laughs> you do it in somewhere like Eastern Europe or even anywhere in Europe really, I think would be good. Yeah. But Warsaw is a nice place. Um, it's like, it's based as well. It's relatively, it's not expensive either. It's like probably, it's probably more expensive than here, but not like anything crazy. Yeah. And um, yeah, combine that, like it's perfect season, season wise as well because here is perfect from like November, December, January. And then that's when it's terrible in Warsaw. It's like snowing and shit. So yeah, yeah. it's like a good split, I reckon. Yeah, another thing uh, you mentioned is like dating, uh, going to Dubai or, you know, or the dating scene here or, Cape, or Dubai is not good. Uh, where, are the, where are the best women? Depends what you like. Because, mm -hmm. you know, maybe <laughs> we can go a little bit because we've talked about this before. But, you know, when I was in um, Marbella, it's like, you know, we're at the club and you know, I would see a beautiful girl and I would, you know, like go see her and like, hey, what's up? Maybe trying to dance and things like that. And just, you know, connect, you know, <laughs> connect, I'm not yeah, just going to yeah. stand there, you know, and it's like, and then they were like, oh, it's 400 euros. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bro, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to, <laughs> money into what I mean. like, <laughs> so it's like, so I realized that like, oh, wow. Okay. So like every, uh, so I guess the, the, the logic is that anywhere where there is money, it's a it's a it's a business. It's it's work for for them, right? So like for you guys, you know, you guys have definitely traveled more than I have. I don't really like traveling actually. Where are where do you guys think are? Whoa, 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 what was that take? You, you said anywhere where there's where's, money. Where is where is? Yeah, I feel like anywhere where there's a lot of money, or maybe a specific club. It's like would be good or bad. It's no. It's I feel like no. I feel like it's just like it's just escorts everywhere. Anywhere I mean, where almost. there's a lot of money. Um, yeah. Don't you think so? It's, it's a pattern. I mean, you can't say that like every girl thing? that lives in a, in a rich zip code is a prostitute. Like that's not accurate. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, like <laughs> I talked to one girl, she's a prostitute. They're all prostitutes. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't one girl, bro. It's like four. You know, oh, okay. when it's four back to back, you're like, okay, let me just call it a night. <laughs> And they'll go to the bro keep club, you know, because yeah. <laughs> maybe you can find a wife. I mean, Marbella, you went to like one of the worst places for, for dating. I mean, you can do well there. Like I know friends who live there and they like this amazing like dating there, but you have to talk, you have to be talking to the like locals. If a girl comes to Marbella for like the summer or something, like I highly doubt that's going to be like a, a good setup. Yeah. Same as Dubai. Like if she's there for like a week or something, like probably not a good setup. Um, I think you can do well pretty much like anywhere for dating if you do it right. Like you, you shouldn't just go to a place because the girls are better. I don't know, like it's a bit, it sounds like a bit coping, 
Yeah. It's like a, it's like a, it's a scare. It's coming from a place of scarcity, right? Doing something because you can't get something. Mm -hmm. Like you should believe you can get anything anywhere, but it's more about like maximizing like your results, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'd say Eastern Europe is the best in my yeah. opinion. If you want something more traditional, something more like more, I guess, normal to what a relationship has been for a long time. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I've heard a lot of people talk about Eastern Europe. Oscar might know more on the topic as well. He can expand. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was staying in Minsk for a while, which is like Belarus. It's like, okay. is it n not much Western influence there. And that was also yeah, a different flavor, but it's, it depends what you like, you know, it's much more, yeah. uh, it's like, it's like the, the physical part of the girl, which is obviously like the Eastern European look. And then there's like the cultural experience, which then forms the personality. So I would say like physically, they're definitely the most beautiful, but then the cultural personality thing is, it's an acquired taste, you know, yeah. it depends if you like that. It's yeah. more like, uh, lacking in personality, I would describe it as like, to uh, no ego with the Eastern European chicks, like that's that's the main thing I would say. Yeah, how is how is dating for you guys? Because like, you know, maybe I can share for me. It's like um, a lot of people like to ask me, like, oh, like, hey, is th how is it now that you have money? Like, is it like how is it different? Like, oh, you must be getting you know a lot of girls and things like that. But one thing I've realized is it depends on what you're focusing on. You could have a lot of success and not even have a girl. Just Which because I feel many like- Many guys do. <laughs> many, right? So I've realized that like, you know, just because you have money does not really mean like someone, and maybe this is where it's so important to have, because I think like you can have money but not have status in a way, right? Or sure. not have, you know, not be known. And, and it's so important to, to be known because I think that's really the, like the, the if you were to, like, you know, I asked for like, what's the one scale, but like, what is the also one thing to have that can really make your life good? Like status, mm -hmm. right? I think that's everything, but um, I forgot what I was about to say, but probably around the lines of like, how has, you know, being, having an audience, having status influence your, you know, your dating or like, you know? It's more just like the flexing is gonna attract a certain type of girl. Mm. And if you like that kind of girl, then yeah. it's productive, but. If you don't like that type of girl, then yeah. you don't want to be flexing. That's my experience of it. Yeah. What do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, I've definitely had a like a around the world opinion on this in terms of my perspective on it. Um, oh, this is going to be a brained up. Um, okay, so yeah, I think I think that to answer the question, you need like it's first like what is the goal? You know, is it like yeah. do you want to maximize your the amount of girls that you're dating in order to have all these different experiences. And if, if that is what you're looking for, why are you looking for that? And understanding yourself of, of why are you looking for that? Um, I, I think the biggest, the, the biggest misconception, the biggest mis, not misconception, the biggest misintention that guys, especially in the online marketing, make money online world make, uh, and just guys in general make, is they think, okay, I'm new to the dating world. I need to date as many girls as possible, and then I'll find a good girl. Like I'll, I'll know, you know, which one I like, and that's the one I'll go with. Yeah. Um, and so then they they join, you know, some kind of dating programs, or they just go out and they go to Eastern Europe. They date this and that, and and they might learn some things, and that might that may well work for them. Um, however, I've I've found that that's actually the wrong way to go about it. Completely. Um, I'm in a relationship right now. I've been dating this girl for over, yeah, probably about a year now. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, a, it was an intention decision that I made over a year and year and a half ago um, where I basically realized that my intention from the offset in dating was I want to hook up with X amount of girls and X hot girls. Yeah. Like, so, so it was like, you know, I want to date this many girls a week. I want to, you know, meet this, I want to meet this type of girl. This, I want her to look like this. And it was very like numbers oriented and looks oriented mm. and like personality here and there, I guess. But like, that wasn't really, it was person, personality, looks, vibe and quantity. 
And I thought, okay, out of that, then I'll find a girlfriend. And then one day, actually, I went to a couple weddings. Um, it was October 2021. And two of my friends got married pretty young. One of them grew up like super religious Christian guy um, and married this girl. And I was just like, damn, that's like kind of beautiful. Like yeah. this guy's married at 24, 25. I can, I can just tell like through the energy bit, they're like both very, very content. My other friend who's also in uh, online marketing space, Quasi Joe here, he also got married. Yeah. And like I, I've known him for years, and so like seeing both of them get married and go attending their weddings in the same month, I just had this flip, this, this flip switch in my head, and I was like, wouldn't it be nice if I could just be happy with one girl, mm-hmm. and not have to set this intention of like date, 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 hook up, hook up, hook up, like flex, you know, to my boys and stuff like that, and get the validation, and like if I just had like one that I would hold down. And as soon as I made that switch, it was a little bit scary because now I knew, especially as someone who's made money, knowing if I set an intention, it's going to happen. The new intention I set was like, all right, I'm attracting a life partner. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's kind of scary. Like that's yeah. way scarier. That level of commitment of intention is way scarier than like, yeah, like hook up here. Like, you yep. know, I'm going to hook up with a bunch of girls in this country. Like, yeah. it's just, it's way scarier to make that, that verbal commitment and or intention commitment and as soon as I did that like the I guess just like the way I went about dating like completely shifted and um and and so does status and and like money impact when you make that intention switch um how you uh, like the type of girl you look for and the type of girl you date yes but understand too and there's countless stories of this where like when a guy is dating a girl who's like real values based like raised correctly you know family oriented where that guy was super rich at one time but then something happened crypto crash ftx whatever he lost everything and his girl left right went to the next d yeah right versus the guy who picked a girl who was raised right built everything with her she was there from the start he loses everything and she's still there like helps him build it back up and and like i it hasn't happened to me yet but i'm like 99.999 percent sure if i lost everything tomorrow even for like a year that my girl would still be right next to me yeah and that's a really cool thing to to have have. feel like feel like i've kind of come to that realization yeah what happens after one year what do you mean? What you said. She'd oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think at that point, then, I mean, like, what, what, I, what am I doing? <laughs> but, that, that, but that means, like, I mean, but, but so my point is, like, are, it's, not, um, it's not how much you have. It's, like, do you have perspicacity? Like, do you, like, it's literally that. It's, like, can my you. My sheer infatigability. <laughs> do you have with that? my. That's what it is, though. Like, can you, can you adapt? Like, yeah, if you don't, I mean, I'd say, I'd say it a year, but, like, if you're just incompetent, bro, she should leave you, you know? Yep. Like, I agree. 100%. So, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's more like, does she sense that you're intelligent rather than, you know, how much, how much have you had from X, Y, Z? I reckon, <laughs> like, 98% of all, like, times that a guy's trying to, like, talk to a girl or hook up with multiple girls or do, like, a multiple girlfriend thing, I feel like 98% of that whole thing is just chasing validation. Yeah, I feel like that's all it is. Sure. Like it when is. I thought about it for me, I was like, it's just chasing validation. It's just trying to feel meaningful in yourself in that facet of life. Yeah. So when, if, if that need for validation, is that something that is like, is that something that you should try to get rid of or is it something that you should feed like a, like a fucking virus in your body? Yeah, it's pro- I feel like that's what it, like, and that's probably what you've gone about, right? Instead of feeding the virus, you've like basically gotten rid of the virus. Mm-hmm. So. Do you yeah. feel like you're at a point where that vir- like that, that need for validation is like gone? Like, or do yeah. you ever have moments where you're like, man, like, could fucking have a chick? <laughs> um, I mean, I've gone through say. like, no, I mean, I think it's like, it's, it's pretty natural in like the male anatomy to like be to attracted want. to variety, okay. you know? And, and for some guys that, that actually does work. But um, no, I've actually like, 
but with my experiences and the people that I've hung out with and I've seen behind the scenes of like guys that live that way and it's just so not what it looks like. Do you just want to talk never. about that? That'd be interesting, I feel like. Like, I mean, you'll see... You don't have to mention names as well. <laughs> well, you just see... <laughs> <laughs> um, guys that are... That are uh, well, I'll say two things. I'll say two things. You see guys who are living, like they have lots of girls around them all the time. The girls are all like super pretty. Um, and, and in many cases, those guys are hooking up with a lot of those girls and, and you know, they leave, then they fly new girls in and then they're hooking up with those girls. And, and like, I've been there on these trips. I've been to the most beautiful villas, places in the world, like with these kind of trips. And, um, and yeah, and, and, and it happens, but it's just not as amazing and like clean as you might think. Like, either that girl's heart was just like broken on the spot and equally like energies we could get into metaphysics but like <laughs> like e every action has an equal and opposite reaction if you're going to break a heart yours is partly your soul is ripped apart like yeah. it just that's just how it works um and and so there's that side of it there's just there's the validation seeking side of it there's um yeah there, there's I mean, in my, and in my own journey, I noticed that the only reason I wanted to do that was out of insecurity. Like, it was just the only, it was like, the reason I wanted as, as, as many girls as possible is because that, that quantity felt good. Yeah. And I also knew that I wasn't confident enough to feel like I deserved to have a girl that would stick by me. Mm. I just didn't think I was good enough. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that, that's a journey to like realize that confidence in yourself. And as a man, it's like super hard to admit. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. And, and so, so I'll, I'll admit that about like the hookup side, but on the other side, even relationships, like I show my relationship on the internet. I've made that decision to do that. It's not as sunshine and rainbows as I make it out to be. Yep. Um, but I also try to be as transparent as possible with it too. Like every argument that I have with my girl, I would tell guys on a coaching call. I'm like, mm. here's the things we disagree about and here's how we're handling them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, it's just like, there, there's, there's still, you know, I don't have the perfect relationship, but relationships aren't perfect. You're never gonna find the perfect girl and she's never gonna find the perfect guy. You find someone who's a teammate and you build each other to perfect together. Yeah. One thing I've realized about girls, you know, you know, this is going to mostly, you know, guys are going to understand this more if girls are watching this, hey, sorry. <laughs> but um, I think as a man, if you're on a path to become successful, you've got to, you've got to like chill out with this desire that we have to chase women. Like it's not, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, let's say like Arlen chose to, you know, to settle down. But it does not mean me, that he doesn't see another girl and be like, you know, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. But it doesn't mean that when you see a girl, you don't necessarily have that, you know, you might be attracted to them physically, right? But you need to make a choice, a decision to like, hey, I have this desire, but I'm not going to act upon it, right? And the thing I want to come up down to is like, if you're chasing women every weekend, oh my God. <laughs> You're going to be so broke that not even like not even the government can help you. Right. Because it takes so much. No, but like literally it takes so much energy, bro. It's the, like the same energy it takes to go look for a prospect who can pay you 10 grand a month is the same energy you go to chase pussy. Tinder is a full time job, bro. Like yeah. it's crazy, you know, like for me. So I'll, I'll, I'll get around guys and I'm like all they're talking about is like, yo, I want to. I want to get this girl and fuck this girl. I'm like, bro, try to fuck, make your life better for, for once. Like at least take today to your and account. ask yourself like, hey man, like, how, how can I drive a Porsche by the end of this year? How can I have an amazing villa? How can I have an, you know, money to, to send my kids to Harvard if they want to go to Harvard, right? But it's like, and they don't understand that like, you know, if you can, it, you need to be focused on the right things, right? Make the right decision. What is the one thing that you can do? So you can actually get the girls. Don't focus on the girls because getting the girl does not actually make your life better. And I've even realized when I go through periods where I'm seeing a lot of girls, because it might happen. Sometimes I'm like, yo, fuck, you know what I mean? I need, I need, I need some <laughs> girls. But it's like I'm so empty during those periods. 
the periods where I have the most girls is the periods where I'm the most, you know, unhappy person. Because, you know, I, I, I care about, I, I generally care about girls. Like, I'm not, I see a lot of people are like, fuck boys, but for me, it's like, it's actually a little different. I feel like I need to take care of, of a human, of a girl. Like, I generally, like, when I see, and, you know, I'm, I'm going to go just a little bit personal, right? But I'll have, I'll meet a girl. We'll, let's say, have something. We'll spend, a, you know, a week or two together. And then, and then after it ends, they think that I used them. But it's like, no, I did not fucking use you. I wanted to share this experience with you, right? And the thing that hurts me the most is when they think that I just wanted them for, like, just to hook up. Like, come on, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, if, if you're out there just going after girls and girls, like, you better make sure that, like, at least you can take care of them and make sure that, like, the intention is set right. Because I feel like a lot of guys go around just, like, hooking up with girls and not really even caring about them, right? And, but anyway, just, just going after girls, guys, is the worst chase to, to go after. Like, stop that. Like, even if someone is, t- t- just find one girl, marry her, be happy, and just get to business, get to work, you know? Like, stop. I mean, you can have periods of time, right? There are seasons. But d- did you do, like, the opposite thing? The thing that you're talking about? Yeah. Because like, you kind of have to do that Yeah, for a no, while. I mean, but I am doing it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I am doing it, yeah. And money. I personally feel like, you know, one girl is good, you know? Because I think it's a commitment. I think you've got to train yourself to commit. Yeah, yeah. Even in that's business. That's the scariest part. It's the hardest well, It's part. like sacrifice. Because like, you, like you're, you, I mean, we're here because you're basically, you set an intention to build this successful company yeah. and you've done it. Yeah. You've probably done that with numerous other things in your life. Mm-hmm. So you know the second you're like, all right, I'm going to find that girl, you're yeah. going to find it. But that's a bit scary. Yeah. Because, you know, like, I don't know if you've had heartbreak before, but like there's very few things that are more painful than heartbreak. And so, like, the second you say, okay, I want that, then you know you could also lose that. So. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, I think it goes into business, too. I feel like the reason why most people fail is because they can't commit to one thing. And I feel like in business, if you really want to, <laughs> if you really want to, if you really want to, if you really want to play something, a big game, it's like, and I've realized this, that, like, you got to commit to one thing at a time and say no to short-term pleasure. And short-term pleasure, just like in relationships, it could be just hooking up with a bunch of girls, right? You also gotta say no to that $100 client, that $1,000 a month client, that $2,000 a month client. Eventually, you gotta say no to short-term, small baby money to wanting the real thing. And, but a lot of people get so lost into like, oh, I'm already making 20K a month, 30K a month. Like, I don't want to lose that thing. But it's like, to really get to 300K, 3 million, even 30 million a month, you actually got to commit to the thing that, where you lose the pleasure of, of comfort, short term, or of pleasure. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's like, it's hard to do. And that's why I think succeeding in life is hard. Because you actually got to say no to the things you want. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, one thing I wanted to, maybe we can just you know, wrap up, it's uh, I'd love to learn more about you know, what, is your, what is the mission of each one of your companies, right? Because um, I think that if you're really gonna put in the work to really build in a successful company, you have to have a mission and you have to have something that you're working towards, whether it's raining, whether it's snowing, whether it's hard, whether you're broke, it's like you gotta, and that's the drive. Because I think that once you figure out how to make money, a lot of people lose the drive. Right. And the thing that keeps you moving is like that one thing that you think is is more important than even the success of money. So um, and maybe I think you two should should share a little bit about, you know, how you even got into doing what you're doing, because I think that's that's an important story to share. But, you know, while you're also talking about your mission, you mean like a mission statement or no, just like uh, like like what is that one thing in you that makes you do what you're doing, right? Besides making money, because I know a lot of people are like, oh, I don't care about the money. No, we care about the fucking money, <laughs> Oscar's, guys. Oscar's got a crazy story, right? But That's ba- why I want him to yeah, share. Yeah, and then but into, dude, just go, go on a right. tangent, please. Right. Like, right. tell us the Amish, Drop tell the us sauce. the farm. Bro, like, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> but basically, I, I think, like, I think for me, I don't know, basically, I've always been like a maverick, and I think lots of people, maybe you guys also, similar. That's why you're kind of doing what you're doing. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm kind of attracted to, like, having fun and fucking shit up, basically. Yeah. And that's kind of what I'm doing, you know? And uh, that was the appeal that like got me into, let's say, not following like mainstream ways of, 
yeah, taking care of health and things like that and uh, just being like, being the maverick and uh, doing things unconventionally. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing basically, I'd say like the milk with the AP and all that kind of contrasting opposing forces. That's kind of fun for me and yeah. just, yeah, bringing that to a lot of people and it's just kind of showing of like not being too super religious on one side and kind of just bringing everything together and having fun with it. That's kind of what I'm doing. But that yeah. was like very abstract to me. Yeah. Arlen, what about you? What's your, what's your goal with your, with everything you're doing when it comes to your program and what um, do you want to live? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, on, on like the, the spiritual plane, like we're, I mean, we're all spiritual beings having a temporary human experience if we want to get on, on that level. Yeah. Um, so on that level, it's just like contribute to whatever spiritual awakening we're all having. That's like the high level. Uh, but, but down to like the, the, the physical realm and um, not sound like a, a, uh, a, you know, channeling freak. Um, but yeah, basically I just, honestly, I just want to like share the most meaningful things to me. The, the things that have added the most meaning to my life with the world. That's pretty much it, which are, which comes down to really two things. And that's my mom and dad taught me art and continue to teach me art and photography and design and then family. And those two things, it's just like, that's what Tribe Accelerator is. It's just, it's just how to make friends and real friends and friends that stick by you no matter what. Yeah. And, um, incorporating that with like other things that have brought me a lot of joy, which is just art and design. Love it, love it, love it. Daniel, where are you trying to build with that, with a personal brand and all the knowledge and all the sauce that you've, you've accumulated over the last few years? Yeah, I've been thinking, I don't, like on the surface level, it's like crypto, make money, but it's really ultimately just about like fixing mindset really. I think the biggest, impact I want to have, or at least the biggest thing I want people to take away is just improving their mindset and perspectives and mental models that they use for wealth and different topics. So yeah, maybe on the surface it's, I teach crypto, but it's really just about mindset, just reprogramming yourself to think correctly. So yeah. yeah. Love it. Love it. Yeah. I feel like, you know, what about you, bro? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, a, I'm, oh. a, I'm a, I'm a share right. what, what my thing is. Uh, but Daniel, one thing about you that is, um, cause you're, you're, you're a, from what I've seen, and you know, you know, following you online and even seeing you in person, it's like, I feel like you're a special character. You're the type of character that was like, it's private, but you actually care a lot more about influence and actually seeing other people succeed. And it's something that it's, I, I haven't seen it a lot, because a lot of people may be more on, they're more, they're like one extreme. They're really, really just dialed in into learning and becoming the smartest person. Let me get rich myself and let me just, be really good myself, or there are other people on the other end where it's like, oh, let me just put pour into others and really have influence, right? But for you, it's like, it's like you're on both on both things. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, it's yeah. it's interesting. I agree. I don't know. I find, I don't know. I think I've just learned that everything that has good that has come in my life came from first giving something to someone, and then it sort of came back like in like a fucking boomerang, like six yeah. months later. So it's sort of program myself to enjoy helping others because it just ultimately comes back like 10 times more. Yeah. So it's, I don't know, just like thinking about how you can help someone else and then give them a ton of value and then eventually it'll, I don't know, make its way back. So, yeah. but that's just like every business, right? It's just collecting IOUs, like giving away value on Instagram, like your reels and stuff. It's the same yeah. thing. So, yeah. hundred uh, percent. When it comes for me, uh, I think it's, it's a little different. Uh, I don't know, it's not different, but it's, so for me, uh, I was born in Rwanda, right? I spent 13 years uh, of my life there. So I spent most of my time in Africa, right? In all the years that I've been on this planet. And I got the opportunity to move to Canada when I was 13. And, um, you know, many people will not understand this, but it's like when you get the opportunity to go into a place where it's developed and there is more opportunities. I think the number one goal that you have is like, yo, let me take advantage of this and actually let me create something uh, meaningful uh, for myself, for my family. And uh, when I got there, one of the things that I realized is that even in, in Canada or in the States or you know, in Europe, there are a lot of people who have access to these opportunities, but they're also still settling for being average, right? 
And one of the commitment that I made to myself is that I don't want to not be able to live and experience life to its greatest extent, right? I think many people settle, you know, you look at someone driving nice cars, you look at someone, you know, flying private, you look at someone, you know, let's say we're in this villa, you know, it costs a lot of money. It's like, why aren't you able to live this life? It's not necessarily about the money, like, oh, the Rolexes or the Richards or the, the cars, but it's like, you need to at least have the ability to be able to live, right? So for me, with my business, I've just built it in a way that uh, hopefully I can show a lot more people how they can be able to not have to worry about money. Because I feel like until you figure out this money game, money controls your life, right? And I think that we're not put on this earth. We're like insanely capable creatures, right? Just to chase money. Like it's literally the dumbest thing that can happen. If you sacrifice your life just for money, like every day you're like, hey, how can I make money? How can I get my paycheck? I don't think you've tapped into your potential, right? So my goal with maybe client acquisition that I owe is, you know, let me lay the foundation. Because for me, it's like, yo, I, I, I mean, I don't necessarily come from nothing, nothing. But it's like, I didn't understand how people could make such amounts of money, right? And I was fascinated by it. But now that I'm starting to tap into that, I've realized, like, bro, it's the easiest thing ever. <laughs> but you kind of, like, you kind of, like, need someone who came from nothing to show you that it's possible. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So... My goal is like, yo, let's fucking live. Let's fucking have the best life ever. But not just for ourselves, but also for everyone around us. And for that, you need to be making a lot of money. So for me, it's like, yo, let's play this business game. Let's collect a lot of dough. And, and then let's get it out of the way. Let's just be like, let's be cool. Let's be, you know, whatever everybody, you know, whatever is your vibe, then express yourself that way. But for me, it's really like life first, you know. A beautiful yeah. answer. Now, I have one more question for you. I want to know about skincare routine. Uh, skincare routine is uh, make sure you get 10 hours of sleep. <laughs> make sure you make good money every week. <laughs> <laughs> 10 hours. I think, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you know, I don't know. It's, there's no skincare routine. It's just like, you know, okay, my skincare routine is like make your dream, make your dream come true. That's, that's <laughs> good. I'm with you, bro. That's good because that also is like mitigate stress. It's everything, right? Yeah. And you, you'll, you'll be beautiful regardless, you know, even if the skin is not you, the you will have, <laughs> Yeah, maybe a little bit of raw eggs on the face as well. Maybe. That, oh, that can work. That can work. Yeah. But no, you know, a lot of people try to cheat the game. It's like, no, man, they can't, you can't lie to yourself. You gotta, you, you know, so a lot of people think that they can just buy the material stuff to try to prove and validate, get validation from others. But I've realized that the most important validation has to come from within, right? You need to be confident from like the core level of you, right? Once you, and that can only come from you doing cool shit, hard shit that you're like, fuck man, how did I do that, right? And um, so like, you know, focus on yourself. It doesn't have to be business. It could be, you know, building a brand, building a personal brand. You don't necessarily just need to focus on making money, but do something that is hard. Do something that is passionate, that you're passionate. Not, don't, fo don't chase passion actually, just chase money first and then <laughs> do something that's, that, you know, something great. But uh, no, guys, thank you guys so much for, thank you. for thank jumping you, on. Thank this you. was amazing. Um, and yeah, hopefully people found this uh, valuable. And uh, yeah, you guys want to you know, just drop your, drop your Instagram so people can go. At Oscar Vore, A-O-S-C-A-R-V-O-R-E. Let's go. Yeah, it's just <laughs> Arlen. Instagram. Mine's just Arlen, A-R-L-I-N. I'm not really an Insta guy. You could, I'm, I'm not going to put my Instagram. It's personal. But Twitter, you can do. It's just CryptoDan19. I won't spell it out. You can spell it. Don't be an idiot. <laughs> There's cool. the take coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Uh, thank you, guys. Have an amazing time. And uh, rewatch this so you can get all the sauce. Share it. Share it. Share it with everyone. If you love like, someone. Like, comment. Like, comment. Leave everything that can help us.